Once upon a time, about four and a half billion years ago, <laughs> a great game of cosmic billiards broke out within our young, nascent solar system. Dozens of planetesimals caromed about, dislodging bits and pieces of one another in a grand competition for a place in orbit around the sun. Earth was not spared from the pummeling. After a particularly nasty clash with a Mars-sized planetesimal, our rocky guts sputtered out to form the moon and our leftover remains developed an axial tilt, doomed to wobble in its orbit like a cosmic top. That is the worst bedtime story <laughs> ever. Well, no, it's it, no. There's a point. Okay. As in all good bedtime stories, right? They're like the point is to make your children have a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> that is the description of what we call the giant impact hypothesis. We expect that to have taken place in the early period of the formation of the solar system. Okay. Well, the Hadeon period. The Hadeon. Hade, named after Hades, which is the god, god of, the of under, hell, right? Yeah, the underworld, the, right? Once again, proving my point about the <laughs> bedtime story, okay? <laughs> so, the whole point of that, one of its features is that our axis that on which we rotate now has a tilt. Right. Yes. And that tilt is 23 and a half degrees. Okay. So th that just means that when the sun looks at us, it goes like this. <laughs> that's, right. that's what it does. <laughs> all. Here's the deal. Earth has seasons because of this tilt. Okay. Now, every year I send out my perihelion I get post. It. I get okay? it. Yes. In January, I say Earth is now closest to the sun. Right. Out of its entire orbit. Okay, because we have this oval orbit around the sun. Right. And sometimes we're close and sometimes we're far. O ellipse is the proper word. Okay. And in January, we're closest. And every time someone said, wait a minute, January, this is winter. It's winter. Right, right. We can't be close to the sun <laughs> because it's cold. When we are closer to the sun, it's by a couple of million miles. Okay. Now, it sounds like a lot. Yeah, but it's not that much. It's not that much. It's right. not that much yeah. relative to our average distance. Average distance is like 93 million miles. 150 million kilometers, all right? And so we vary by one or two percent, okay. okay, in our distance to the sun. But it does not have as big an effect as the fact that our axis tilts. Because here's the deal. If this is the sun, okay. okay, I hold the sun out here, and while we're tilted towards the sun, right. the sun's rays are much more direct on the northern hemisphere. Nice. Okay? Gotcha. And on the southern hemisphere, they're diluted. Yeah, kind of missing it. Miss a little bit. So it means the ground heating is not as effective. Right. Okay? Because that's what the sun is trying to do, is trying to heat the ground. Right. Okay? The sun does not heat the air. If it heated the air, right. we would be baking. Like, <laughs> in the oven. In the oven. <laughs> It doesn't make sense to heat the air. We would be, we would be a, hot a straight up. Well, plus we've all been in airplanes and you see the temperature. It goes, it goes down. down when you go up. Right. So it's heating the ground and then the ground is radiating back the heat. There you go. So visible light comes in. Right. That energy gets absorbed and gets re-radiated as infrared. But how do you know visible light comes straight through? How do you know that? Well, cause it's visible. <laughs> Because you can see the sun in the daytime. Exactly. If visible light didn't make it through, you wouldn't be able to see the sun. That's right. Yeah. This is a simple, blunt simple, yeah. truths of the universe. Yeah. Okay. So visible light comes through. That's energy. Heats the ground. Ground heats the air. And this, over time, shifts the overall temperature from month to month. Right. So as you come into the summer months, the ground heating gets more and more and more intense. And then as you leave the summer months, it becomes less, less and, and less, less and less. Right. And so the ground has less heat to heat the air and you get colder. Right. And and so so that's our summer. Now, how do we get our winter? All right. Okay. So, so our axis is pointing out in space. Right. Okay. So when we orbit the sun, the axis continues to point out right. in that same direction. 
Oh, but then we're coming around. We're coming around. And when you come around, right. now we're pointing away from the sun. Right. Okay. Now it's like Rather you're going to warm my behind. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where previously the sun didn't shine. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Put this where the sun don't shine. That's it. No, it does shine, but just like so. Now northern hemisphere is pointing away. Okay, so now we are getting the diluted sunlight right. as it hits the ground, right. and the southern hemisphere gets the direct sunlight. Right. And of course, in between, you get all the in between phases of that. Exactly. So now Let's there's see. a time delay between the heating of the ground. Yes and the ground heating the air. Yes. It's a time delay. So when is ground heating at a maximum during the day? When would that be? Just think to yourself. Mm. The hottest part of the day. No, it's not the hottest part. Oh, so here's the deal. The ground is getting heated most when the sun is directly over top of it, but it takes time for it to heat up. So now that it takes time for it to heat up, the hottest part of the day will not be when the sun is over directly. It will be a couple hours later, which will be about two o'clock in the afternoon. Boom. And that's why it's hot at two o'clock. Yes, yes. That's the time delay. That is awesome. Ain't that some stuff? That is great. Ain't that some stuff? See, and you thought noon was the hottest part no, of the day. No, it is day. not. It's not, you dumb. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, 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 there's oh, more? Oh. But wait, wait, what happens on a daytime schedule also happens in the year. So, the day we are exactly pointing towards the sun in that direction, that day is June 21st. Aha. Uh -huh. Is June the hottest month of the year? No, it is not. No, it is not. No, it is not. August, at, end of July, it, August is the hottest time is. of the year. There's the time delay. Look at that. So there's a time delay during the day and a time oh, delay during, during the year. During the year. That's great. Yeah. That's good stuff, man. Yeah. And you know what takes even longer delay? The ocean. That makes sense. The ocean it, it is taking its time yep. getting hot. Well, you know what? That's so, so, why it's, it's great to go swimming in the ocean it, it, in October. Yeah, yeah. September. It's it's that's when you the get water the warmer is still ocean. Warm. Yeah, that, it, at this, least on the East Coast. Yeah. There's some other issues. West Coast. Is there another coast? <laughs> I'm sorry, I I missed that memo. Someone should tell me whether or not to. Is there another coast? I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So, so that is the, the the source of seasons. And by the way, when we're tilted towards the sun. If you just look at the geometry of it, we are in sunlight for most of the hours in a 24-hour day. So not only is are the sun's rays more direct, right? There's more of them. Well, right. Hours Longer. Of Longer. That's great. Okay. And all of this conspires to give us our temperature shifts through the seasons. Yes. So remember I told you we do a little bobbing? Right. And then we got the we wobble. Got the wobble. And we have an elliptical oval orbit around the sun. Right. All of this shifts on its own schedule, its own time frame. Okay. Okay. All right. And you put them all together, we get the Malenkovich cycle. I love John Malkovich. <laughs> He's an incredible actor. Yeah, not him. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that gives us a cycle on the scale of tens of thousands of years. Right. Ice ages. Yes. And, Ice ages. And this, by the way, back to climate, because you know how I You're am. You're a climate man. This is what some people who think that they're scientifically literate try to say. Because they spent a few hours on they Google. They spent hours on Google, right, a couple hours on Google, <laughs> and they're like, oh, well, we're not really having global warming. These are part of the natural Milankovitch cycles. Yeah, the natural cycles of the Earth. Right. Is what people would like to assert. Like to assert. Without thinking to themselves that everything we're describing has happened in the last hundred years. Exactly. And tens of thousands of years is longer than a hundred years. years. Okay. Right. All right. Right. And so. And then what I do to get them is I go spell Milankovitch. <laughs> Chuck, just to be clear, when I say we're tilted towards the sun, right, we're tilted <laughs> twenty three and a half degrees, and so. At this peak point, you can ask, what part of Earth's surface is getting the most direct rays? It's 23 and a half degrees north latitude. Oh. Because, because if we were just straight up and down, what part of the Earth would get direct rays? Um, the very middle, right? Which we call? 
The equator. The equator, right. right. So now we tip 23 and a half degrees. Uh, it's the 23 yeah, and a half degree line, and that determines the Tropic of Cancer. Oh. Yeah. I'm a cancer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so that tip, when you come around the other side, the southern hemisphere part that gets direct rays, we call that the Tropic of Capricorn. Right. Right. And so in that zone, these are the tropics. Nice. Between 23 and a half degrees south, 23 and a half degrees north. There you go. That's where you get to tropical forests. Th th that's right. And, well, there are other forests as well. Right. There are reasons for having rainforests, not only in the tropics, but we call it the tropics for that for reason. For that reason. Because of the Earth's tilt. Nice. Okay. So now, uh, Venus doesn't have a moon. Right. Barely has a tilt. Right. And has very stable climate because it has no seasons. That's a shame. That's a shame. No wonder Venus is so lonely. <laughs> Needs love. <laughs> no seasons, no tilt. The axis of Uranus is tilted 98 degrees. So you're dare going upside down, you know what I mean? Basically, that's probably more than you ever cared to know about axial tilt. No. If there was more that we could do right now, I would be willing to do it. I'll just throw in a couple more things. Okay. okay. Uh, if we were very elliptical, All right. then our proximity to the sun would matter and start competing with the axial tilt, okay? But right. we're not so elliptical that that's a big deal right. in our everyday lives. You know has the most elliptical orbit of them all? Well, you say it's not a planet, so it doesn't make a difference. Ah, you know, yeah. I'm talking about Pluto. Yeah. Yeah, Pluto, Pluto, Pluto. Pl Poor Pluto. Pl Pluto, is, the orbit is so elliptical, it crosses the orbit of Neptune. Oh, well, that's- That ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. And it happened in my lifetime. Yeah. Okay, it spends 20 years closer to the sun right. than Neptune is. It did it from 1979 to 1999. Hold on, I'm just gonna cut this dude off. <laughs> That's what that was. That, is it, is it a race just gonna track? cut off Neptune. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, um, yeah, and, and plus, Pluto is also tilted in its orbit. Okay, it's the most tilted object among what was formerly known as the collection of planets. Right. It was thought it was- Until you got through with it. What do you, I, I was an accessory. This man killed Pluto. No, no, don't, not on can't TV, believe, not on can't this, believe not this on the dude. video. Just don't went, start. Went no, into the, Pluto's time to stop bedroom the video. in the- So Chuck, I didn't read you the ending of the bedtime story. Oh, thank, okay, 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 okay. Okay, here it is. The spinning planets in their appointed orbits around the sun are like pirouetting dancers in a cosmic ballet, choreographed by the forces of gravity. Oh, that is beautiful. That's okay. I'm 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 good to go to sleep now. Okay. You've been watching Star Talk. I'm your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Chuck Nice here, of course, my co-host. As always, I bid you to keep looking up.